For many of you, this view of the garden here at the old vicarage in Wixley will be very familiar. And during this most difficult, and for so many of you, very tragic year, we are really so sorry not to be able to welcome you to our garden at this time. We should be opening in early May, but I thought perhaps I would show you a few areas of the garden which are looking particularly pretty at the moment, and then we can sort of build on that and perhaps tell the story of the garden throughout the summer. This is the secret garden on the north side of the house. It was here that I used to come and sit and think about what I could do with this garden. There's a bench and on it an inscription that reads, if I could put my words in song and tell what's there enjoyed, all people would to my garden throng and leave the city's void. There are lots of pots of tulips in the garden and this one is just beginning to show some colour. Copper image mixed in with caro. So I'm rather hoping that against the brickwork that this is going to look particularly nice. The garden on the south side of the house is approached through a gate in the east wall and if you turn left there's a long path down to a seat at the bottom. This always reminds me a bit of the advice that Sybil Spencer gave me. Her son Robin designed and made the most wonderful garden at York Gate in Leeds. She always said that paths should lead somewhere and when you arrive there and turn round, the view back the other way should be equally enticing. So I've tried to do this in this garden because it's not very large and I've tried to create the views both ways. Running along the front of the house, we built a terrace because the house rather looked as though it was flying off into the sky. And then, of course, decided to make a garden in front of this terrace, which actually was probably an old carriageway. So I had a pick and some knee pads and off we went. This border here is bone dry, fantastic drainage, and the perfect place for growing those slightly tender shrubs and perennials. On either side of the seat are two pots of a lovely tulip. Just coming into its own called Havran. On the west side of the house, there's a gravel path and a long border with views out over the park. A hazel structure made to support a rose called Tuscany, which would blow about in the wind if it was allowed to. And the last few flowers on a Magnolia Leonard Messel and a structure we call the Temple to the Four Winds because when we put it up the hedge behind didn't exist and it was very very drafty down here and underneath you can see the circular stones which is a typical bit of York Gate inspiration. This connects the border on my right to what we call the river path, which runs off to the left. This is actually at the bottom of the garden where you saw the seat before. And this is the view back up towards the east gate. I planted Narcissi thalia in between these squares Walking back towards the house, 
we find the quadrant garden, which is where we normally sit in the summer. This was started about four years ago. Still not entirely happy with what I've managed to do. In the middle, there's a large terracotta pot. Four beds surrounding, underplanted with little Primula Wanda in blue and purple, just to make it a bit more cheery at this time of the year when the lavender is looking rather drab. Looking the other way, over the, the quadrant beds, in the distance is the urn, which is viewed through the temple to the four winds. And beyond is our orchard and the park. <laughs> 